On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, I welcome all of you to today's important event. Um, before we start, let me kindly invite Reverend Mavis Hannah Yeboa, the chaplain of Agogo Presbyterian Hospital, to say a word of prayer for us. Please, with all due respect, shall we be on our feet and pray? Our gracious Father, we want to thank you and bless you with all our hearts and with all our soul and with all our might for this day. We thank you, Lord, for a successful completion of this building. And we bless your holy name that you have given us the opportunity to come and dedicate it to your holy name. We also thank you, Lord, for traveling mercies for all our dignitaries and all invited guests. Father, we thank you for a day like this, and we are commencing this program. So we are committing into your hands that my Lord, your spirit will be with us and go with us. Descend in your glory, Heavenly Father. So as we dedicate this building, you descend in the form of dew, in the form of cloud, in the form of dove, so that my Lord, you spread your wings upon this building and the workers who will be working here and give them the grace to work to their glory. We are committing our meeting into your hands, O Heavenly Father, that with all our programs, every aspect and every item on it, we'll go through to glorify you in Jesus' name. We are looking forward, Father, to see you, seeing us through this program successful. And then we may have a reason to give thanks and honor to your name. Those who are yet to come, we are committing them into your hands. The very traveling message that my Lord, you gave to us, give same to those who are yet to be with us and we will give you all the glory now and evermore. We begin in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, kindly resume your seat. Today is the official opening of the KNUSA International Vasi Institute Collaborating Center. Center that is dedicated to the production and the trial of vaccines. Uh, and this is being done with our partners who are joining us on Zoom. And uh, so I'm going to introduce the dignitaries who are here. And then Andrea, my colleague on Zoom, will do so for those who are on Zoom. So we have in our midst the Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Mrs. Rita Akosia Dexin. She's here. She is the first female Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University in 70 years. Very hardworking woman. We also have in our midst the Deputy Minister of Health in the person of Alaji Mahama. Asia Saini. He is representing the Minister of Health. Then we also have in our midst Dr. Anthony Insia Asari, Presidential Advisor on Health to the President, Nana Adodankwa Kufuado. We also have Dr. Florian Max, who, who is the principal research associate, University of Cambridge, and the deputy director general of International Vaccine Institute. He's also here in our midst. I would defer now to my colleague, Andrea, to do the introduction of our colleagues or our development partners who are online. So over to you, Andrea. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. Um, yeah, we have, we have the honor to welcome some colleagues and speakers on this Zoom. So I would start, I would go the, um, from Dr. Jerome Kim, 
Director General of IVI, um, His Excellency Mr. Lim, Ambassador of Korea to Ghana, um, and then um, Dr. Duncan Steele, Deputy Director of Global Health, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who has pre-recorded his video and we will share it later. Um, and then Ms. Hejin Jung, country representative to the Korea Foundation for International Healthcare. That's it from Zoom. Thank you, Daniel, very much. And back to you, to our Google Press. Thank you so much, Andrea. So today, uh, to tell us the reason why we are here, I have the pleasure and honor to invite Professor Yao Edu Sarkodie, the former provost of the College of Health Sciences here in UST, to do so. Thank you very much, uh, Yaro. Um, the Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, the Special, the Presidential Advisor of Health, the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea, the Special Advisor to the Minister, the Director General of the International Vaccine Institute, Deputy Director of Global Health, Bill Emilia Gates Foundation, Deputy Director of the International Vaccine Institute and Principal Research Associate at the University of Cambridge, the Nananum, the Administrator at Google Hospital, all our international partners, colleagues from Care University, all other protocols duly observed. Good morning. Again, um, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of KNST, I welcome you to this ceremony. We are gathered here this morning to celebrate yet another milestone in the productive relationship between the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and the International Vaccine Institute. Over the past four, 14 years, KNST scientists have been working with partners at the IVI to gather the necessary evidence on the burden of typhoid fever and its related effects on the health and health system of our country, Ghana. This collaboration has been created to KNUST, uh, many things to support our students' training. Um, research labs have been refurbished. Our students have been supported for their training. Many research and publications from this collaboration has contributed to the envious, enviable status of KNUST as the number one university in the country, number one in West Africa, and 12 in Africa. In furtherance of this collaboration, a clinical trial site has been established here at the Google Presbyterian Hospital to bring Kenya scientists closer to the communities we work in. The center has facilities, including a reception for study participants, doctors, officers, vaccine delivery suites, research station facilities, a pharmacy, research laboratories, and vaccine storage facilities. The laboratory in this facility will also support the Agogo Pezzi Hospital in its service delivery efforts. We are here this morning to commission this facility. Next week, we begin a phase four trial of a typhoid conjugate vaccine from the center. The other, there are five other facilities in the center of Chimeria who to be involved in this clinical trial. In all, we will recruit about 23,000 study subjects who will be vaccinated and followed up for up to three years to assess vaccine efficiency, efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity. We are joined at this commission by international partners, as um, Andrea has uh, introduced them. They supported us a lot in the past, and we are grateful to them. We we'll have some recorded messages also uh, be beamed to us. So we are here for two things, to commission this um, state of the art center, and also to outdoor the typhoid viva vaccine trial that will start sometime next week. I wish all of us a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. 
Um, I'm happy to also announce that we have Nana Kwame Inti, the county healing of Agogo in our midst. We also have the finance officer of Kwame Kuma University in Health Science and Technology, uh, Mr. Yaonimo Bafo. We also have Professor Jerry John Ponyo, the director of quality assurance also in our midst. And then of course, uh, the Pro Vice Chancellor needs no introduction because he is the PI for this project. Professor Eliso Wisudabo. We are now going to take the welcome address from the Vice Chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Mrs. Rita Kocha Dixon. Please welcome her. The Honorable Minister of Health, who is being ably represented by the Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, the Presidential Advisor on Health, the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea. Indeed, let me stand with your kind permission on the existing protocols that have been established beautifully by Professor Edu Sarkodie and say good morning to all of you. I am deeply elated for the opportunity to welcome you all to the commissioning of this very important and impressive research center that is targeted at typhoid prevention in this country and beyond. Today, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, an international vaccine institute, further strengthening our collaboration, which has been ongoing since 2007, with the unveiling of this research center. Indeed, this ceremony is another demonstration of KNUST's outstanding history of impactful collaborations with national and international institutions of higher learning and research. For us at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, our position has always been this. The problems of society are our problems. And we go through research to prefer solutions to these challenges, working collaboratively with our partners. Today's commissioning is indeed a classical example of such partnerships. Most certainly, the disease burden of salmonella infections leading to typhoid fever across the globe and on the continent cannot be overemphasized. Nonetheless, the protective role that immunizations have played both locally and globally towards disease prevention is there for all to see. The truth of the matter is that for us to be able to make positive strides towards achieving the universal health coverage, projects of this nature have a huge, huge role to play. Ladies and gentlemen, established in 1993 through the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, the International Vaccine Institute, IVI, is an independent, nonprofit international organization founded on the belief that the health of children in developing countries can be dramatically improved by the use of new and improved vaccines. It is involved in all aspects of bringing a vaccine to reality. Discover new technologies to make vaccines, develop promising vaccine candidates for licensure 
and WHO pre-qualification by transferring technology to partners and building their capacity through technical assistance and capacity building to promote self-sufficiency and sustainability. Today, with the challenges we and other countries around the world are facing in procuring the much needed COVID-19 vaccines, and with the determination of the government of Ghana to go into vaccine production, this partnership between KNUST and IVI comes to augment the efforts of the leadership of this country. KNUST is already working with a team spearheading this important assignment of local vaccine production and would like to assure all and sundry that KNUST is willing, able, and ready to contribute our quota in making the efforts of vaccine production in this country a success, working with our partners and supported with the requisite resources. Prevention, indeed, will always be better than cure. And every effort towards vaccine production should be encouraged in our fight against communicable diseases. The increasing problem of antimicrobial resistance, obviously due to the inadequate antimicrobial stewardship leading to high cost of treatment is worrying. That is why we are super excited that a phase four clinical trial for typhoid fever can begin in this collaborative research center. This research center is here today because some people have had enormous amount of sleepless nights. The visionary leadership of the KNUST scientists and our partners are very much appreciated. Indeed, the university is grateful to all our partners supporting us in this. The European Union, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, University of Cambridge, the Ministry of Health, the Ghana Health Service, Food and Drugs Authority in Ghana, the Agogo Presbyterian Hospital, Nananum, the people of Agogo, and the entire Asantiachim, and most especially the International Vaccine Institute and all our partners. Honorable Minister, ably represented by the Honorable Deputy Minister. The Presidential Advisor on Health, we would like to assure you that KNUST is dedicated and committed to working with you to achieve more towards the healthcare delivery in the country. Our humble request and plea is that do not forget us when you are sharing the resources for health, education, and training. Thank you. Once again, I say well done to our partners and especially our team of scientists from the College of Health Science, KNUST, Ebly, led by our own Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Ellis Ousu Dabo, as the principal investigator. We are indeed very, very, very proud of you. We recall that a couple of weeks ago, the university, through scientists from the same college, also won a grant of 2.3 million euro for the establishment of a German West Africa Center for Global Health and Pandemic Prevention. The sky cannot even be a limit as far as KNUST is concerned. Let us continue to work harder to find solutions to the health problems of our dear country and the globe. Provost and team, we say Aiko. 
the principal investigator, my own Pro Vice Chancellor and brother, and your hard working team of this wonderful project. Congratulations. Well done. To our partners, we say KNUST cherishes this beautiful friendship we share with you. A big thank you to all of you for making today a reality. Once again, you are warmly welcome. Thank you so much for your kind audience. Thank you, Madam Vice Chancellor of the best university in Ghana and the 12 best universities in Africa. Thank you so much. We we'll defer to my colleague, uh, Andrea, to introduce the Director General of IVI. He has a small remark to make, please. Andrea. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Adu Sarkodie and uh, Professor Richard Dixon for your well, warm welcome and for the generous um, recognition of our collaborative work. Um, now, please join us in welcoming Dr. Jerome Kim, Director General of the International Vaccine Institute. Please, Jerome, this is for you. Thank you for your opening remarks, Professor Aju Sarkodier and Professor Dixon. I'm pleased to welcome all of you to this official opening of the KNUST IVI Collaborating Center together with Professor Ellis Owusu Dabo and our colleagues from Agogo Presbyterian Hospital, Kwame Nkrumah, University of Science and Technology. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, His Excellency Im Jong Tech, Ambassador of Korea to Ghana, Dr. Anthony Nsia Asare, Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Patrick Kuma Abogye, Director General of the Ghana Health Service, and Dr. Duncan Steele, Deputy Director of Global Health, at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for joining us, as well as Ms. Heijin Jung, country representative of the Korea Foundation for International Healthcare in Ghana. The opening of this center is very meaningful to IBI as it is our first official international collaborating center. IBI collaborating centers are a new initiative which hosts joint research, development and capacity building activities in partner countries in order to achieve regional health objectives as well as the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. The establishment of this collaborating center follows over a decade of successful scientific cooperation between KNUST and IVI teams in the areas of disease surveillance, vaccine clinical development, vaccination campaigns, vaccine effectiveness studies, and health economic studies for infectious diseases, such as typhoid and invasive non-typhoidal salmonella. Through the official opening of this center, I look forward to broadening our collaboration with KNUST and the government of Ghana to promote vaccine research and education, build in-country capacity, and to cooperate for sustainable solutions to overcome the health challenges imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic and other infectious diseases prevalent in the region. I hope that our concerted efforts could lead Ghana to become an IVI state party in the near future and join the 36 countries in WHO that are members supporting IVI's mission to discover, develop, and deliver safe, effective, and affordable vaccines for global health. Thank you again for being here, and I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the ceremony. Thank you, Jerome. This is um, great having you here, um, and thank you for your uh, continuous support. Um, I'm giving over to Daniel at uh, Google Press. Thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, we, it's time uh, to take some message or remarks from uh, our partners and then representatives of the, of, of the government of Ghana here present. Uh, but before I do so, let me quickly introduce a few other dignitaries who have just joined us. Uh, we have the District Director of Health Services, Mr. Roland Mia, is here with us. Then we also have the Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. J. Roxon. I think he is representing the Regional Director. So we have Dr. J. Roxon with us. I will be introducing other dignitaries uh, as time goes on. But... Oh. 
Okay, so the first on the list is the Deputy Minister of Health, Alaji Mahama Isia Singh. Please welcome him, Deputy Minister, to give us some quick remarks about this event. Please. Um, His Excellency, the Korea Ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency. Lim Jong Tech, Presenter, Advisor on Health, Dr. Anthony Nsien Asari, the Vice Chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Mangu University, Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal Investigator of Tavigana, Tavigana, Regional Director of Health Services. The Register, Kwame University of Science and Technology, the Financial Finance Officer, Kwame University of Science and Technology, to this Ulu Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah. The woman here, Asante Akim Agugu, General Manager of Agugu Hospital, friends of the media, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome. Thank you for providing us this opportunity to share in the excitement of collaborative research culminating in commission of this state of the art facility here at Agogo Prebitian Hospital in the Ashanti Akinov district. Invasive non typhoidal seborrheosis an important overlooked poverty-related infectious disease in South African Sahara, in South Saharan Africa, is associated with increasing antibiotic resistance and is classified by the World Health Organization as a high priority pathogenic developing new antibiotics. Despite an estimated of 59. 59,100 deaths in 2017 and 40.5 case fatality rate, particularly, particularly children under five years of age in South African Africa, no vaccine is currently available. Medical need, difficult diagnosis, an increasing AMR, AMR uh, strongly, strongly advocate. The government's effort at initiating the creation of bioequivalence, the setting up of the Potential Advancing Development Institute, and the support for academia in the development of vaccines and other biologicals is something that we take seriously. As evidence of the seriousness of government in the pursuit of the development of vaccines, we, can, we recently conducted a baseline of human laboratory and equipment survey as basis for addressing the gap in the value chain of vaccines development. Going forward, it is important that we leverage on con constructive partnerships through collaborative research and addressing the gap that exists in this entire value chain of vaccines, vaccines development. My understanding is that soon after the commissioning of this facility, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the famous university, has said it, 
together with her partners, will initiate a phase four vaccine trial for a World Health Organization pre qualified Tafal conjugate for what I call Tafal conjugate vaccine. It is also my understanding that this is a plan phase two dose, the escalating trial for pediatric vaccine for invasive <laughs> non tafodial simulations toward development advancing. All these interactions from academia are noteworthy. And on behalf of government, we would like to commend the University of Science and include Technology and her partners for this achievement. Mahama University, thank you again. All these are in furtherance of the bunch total collaborative among industry, government, and academia. Academic, rather. The so called triple, triple, triple helix. I'm also informed that together, the International Financing Institute in South Korea, European, and developing countries, clinical trials, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are putting into this endeavor over 5 million euros. Over 5 million euros. Fellow citizens of Ghana, let me see this opportunity to reiterate our continuous adherence to the COVID-19 protocols. We are not fully aware of how many times this virus will continue to change its genetic code and the results that it will bring. Therefore, I urge you all to please, to please ensure that you do not lose your guard. Remain smart by observing all the protocols to ensure that we are all come out, we all come out of this epidemic alive. We we'll come out through this alive for is changing, it's changing what the tomorrow data. The following day, this, please. Let's listen to the professionals and make sure that we are alive. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that on behalf of Ghana's Ministry of Health, we embrace this healthcare development, which will bring tremendous benefits first to the people of Ashanti, Akim North, and subsequently to the entire nation. When findings of these studies are taken up for policy formulation and implementation, Korea and USC, I will tell the minister, we shall make sure that this will be implemented fully. On behalf of the Minister of Health and the Government of Ghana, I commend University of Science, KA, Kwame University of Science and Technology and the International Financing Institute for the Great Strive towards eliminating poverty-related diseases that bedevil our people. Long live the Republic of Ghana. Long live the Republic of South Korea. Long live cherished and constructive partners. Let's stay alive. I'll repeat, let's stay alive by respecting and adhering to the COVID-19 protocols. But I started with emphasis on it. I thank you for your attention and God bless us. Thank you, Deputy, Honorable Deputy Minister. We will stay alive. We will stay alive. We shall adhere to all the COVID-19 protocols. And we are happy that you have given us an assurance that you give us more support. Thank you. I defer to my colleague, Andrea, to quickly introduce the next speaker. Andrea, over to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so, Honorable Kraku Ajeman Manu, thank you very much for your generous congratulations. We are also very exciting. We are very excited. Um, this is moving forward. So um, now we are honored to welcome His Excellency Lim 
ambassador of Korea to Ghana. Please, this is your, yours now. Thank you, Andrea. Honorable Deputy Minister of Health and Presidential Advisor on Health, Vice Chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Director General of International Affection Institute, and ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to you all. It's a great honor to congratulate the official opening of the KNUST IBI Collaborating Center. The government of the Republic of Korea has hosted IBI since 1997. Over the 24 years, Korea has provided full support to IBI with a strong commitment towards the development of equitable and distribution of vaccines for world free of suffering from infectious diseases. As the Korean ambassador to Ghana, I am very pleased to see the cross research collaboration between IBI, KNUST, and Agogo Presbyterian Hospital brought to fruition now with the opening of this collaborating center. The COVID-19 pandemic raised awareness of the need for the development of vaccines, both for COVID-19 and for many other infectious diseases. The COVID-19 also let us know of the importance of strengthening vaccination and health systems in local communities, as well as enhanced international cooperation and solidarity for equitable access to vaccines. In this regard, I hope collaboration between KNUSD and IBI can achieve further acceleration of vaccine development, enhanced health and vaccine capacity in Ghana. As the host country of IBI, the Korean government has been actively encouraging countries to join IBI and to support its valuable objectives. I hope to welcome Ghana as an IBI member state in the future. Ghana is a priority development cooperation partner of Korea. Health is the, one of the important sectors Korea is supporting. For example, the Korean government provided in-kind and cash support worth more than 2 million US dollars to the Ghanaian government in order to help Ghana to respond to COVID-19 pandemic since March 2020. In this vein, I sincerely hope the KNUSD IBI Collaborating Center will become an outstanding milestone, showcasing a cross cooperation in health sector between our two countries. Medase, thank you. Yes, we are the Ambassador. Thank you so much, Ambassador Lim Jong Tik, Ambassador of Korea to Ghana. It's now my pleasure to invite the Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Anthony Isiasari, to give his remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. MC. The Minister of Health, ably represented by the Deputy Minister, Your Excellency, the Korea Ambassador to Ghana, the Vice Chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal Investigator, the Registrar, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the Finance Officer, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, my name of Asante Achim Agogo, able represented by the sub chief, regional director of health services, district director of health services, the friends of the media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the government of Ghana and the people of Ghana, I'm delighted to be here to be part of this joyous occasion for two reasons. First, when a team of scientists led by Professor Ellis Uusu Dabo, who was then the Dean of the School of Public Health, conceptualized the idea for the proposal for the conduct of typhoid vaccine trial. I was then the Director General of Ghana Health Services. And I personally wrote a letter of support 
to the European Developing Countries Clinical Trial Partnership, obviously in support of their bid. Secondly, we are in challenging times and certainly in un uncharted territories because of the current COVID-19 pandemic that bedevils our world today, that we are still trying to understand its evolution and pathogenesis, as well as its trajectory. Therefore, any opportunity that allows us to make use of our existing knowledge in the field of medicine and in disease control to advance our course is greatly appreciated. As we are all aware, and have been said several times today, typhoid fever, as an example of causes of sepsis and bacteremia, infects and kills many in low middle income countries, particularly those in sub Saharan Africa and Asia, with at least half a million lives lost to the disease and its invasive forms. Children, particularly, are increased risk of this disease. Indeed, the severe forms and many complications, including typhoid perforations, and I know about it because I'm a general surgeon and I've seen a lot of typhoid perforation cases that we've done over the years, have resulted in disabilities and deaths. We shall leave the economic impact on the subject for another forum, but suffice to say that we cannot continue to look unconcerned To control this disease, the government of Ghana continues to invest in the provision of portable water, clean environment, provide sanitation and hygiene practices and opportunities, in addition to conventional management of diarrhea diseases. However, as it is in the case of many germs and human interactions, these pathogens find a way of surviving and therefore continue to develop resistance to conventional antibiotics. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the need for the use of vaccines. My understanding is that scientists from KNUST, working closely together with International Vaccine Institute, IVI, will be conducting phase four trial using a typhoid conjugate vaccine that has been pre-qualified by the World Health Organization. Indeed, several evidence had been adduced of the potency of this vaccine elsewhere in Asia and has also been used in some countries in Africa. However, the need to continuously build evidence and generate data, particularly from Africa, is very key. Hence, the need to build such centers that allow for continuous monitoring and evidence generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been informed that KNUSC has created a demographic surveillance site for the Asante Achim area and has instituted surveillance of typhoid disease here. Additionally, that there are several planned studies for the future. And this includes phase 2B, those, this escalation trial targeted at the pediatric populations to prevent invasive typhoid disease. Let me therefore, on behalf of the government, commend the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and her partners for your continued scientific explorations. As a government, we shall continue to provide opportunities towards nurturing our own homemade vaccine potential in future dynamic uh, pandemics. As you are aware, and as you've all heard, His Excellency the President, Nana Adodanko Ekufuado, put together in February a presidential committee, the Vaccine Production Committee, to come out of a blueprint for local vaccine manufacturing. Ghana wants to build its own capacity in both vaccine development, which includes very importantly, research and development and manufacturing to have a sustainable ecosystem. And as you are aware, Madam Vice Chancellor, the committee wrote recently requesting for the university to provide a needed base, database of equipment and skill gaps, as well as budget input that will help you to be independent and develop your own vaccine programs, learning from this current COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, Ghana is keen as quickly as possible to produce first and foremost COVID-19 vaccines for Ghana and for the sub-region. And in addition, 
to pro also produce its own EPI vaccines for the future, for the African sub-region. Additionally, we are looking for opportunity to set up what we call vaccine, we are now thinking about the vaccine development and production uh, institute or vaccine institute for short, Ghana Vaccine Institute for short, to come out with our own homegrown in the next few years that Ghana will have its own candidate vaccine in the country. We know that if you want to do all these things, vaccine trials is very important and we are very happy that KNUST has been supporting in this aspect of the development of vaccine in this country. Let me therefore, on behalf of the government, applaud and congratulate the existing partnership among KNUST, the Agogo Presbyterian Hospital, the International Vaccine Institute, and the government of Ghana for this achievement. Our hope is that the commission of this center will herald yet another groundbreaking scientific research to solve the many diseases that confront us as a country. Finally, let me acknowledge the support from our sponsors, such as the European and Developing Countries Clinical Trials, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the International Vaccine Institute, South Korea and Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, and the Presbyterian Church of Ghana and the people of Agogo. The president and the people of Ghana say, are you cool? I would therefore take this opportunity to once again thank all of you and to also to repeat what the deputy minister said, please stay, stay safe and stay alive. COVID-19 is real. Thank you and God bless all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nsia. Dr. Anthony Nsia, sorry. The presidential advisor on health. Please. If you want to set up any vaccine center in Ghana, please come to KUSD because we have vast lands and the human resource abundant. We are the best, don't forget, we are the best in best in Ghana. <laughs> Thank you so much for your kind words. I'll defer to Zoom, my colleague Andrea, to introduce the next two speakers. Andrea, over to you. Um, okay, so I'm very glad to show you the congratulatory remarks from Dr. Duncan Steele, Deputy Director for Global Health at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who has recorded this because uh, right now it's the middle of the night for them, um, so we are very happy to be able to show you this. Honorable Minister and esteemed guests, I'm delighted to be part of this auspicious opening today of the CNUST IVI Collaborating Center for Clinical um, Studies. My name is Duncan Steele. I'm the Deputy Director for the Enteric and Diarrheal Disease Vaccines Team, and we have been working closely with the team at IVI and with the team at CNUST. This partnership has generated incredibly important data around the burden of typhoid fever in Sub-Saharan Africa, and particularly in areas where it is endemic. It is also now moving on to a stage where clinical evaluation of a WHO pre-qualified vaccine will allow us to understand the impact and the potential for a typhoid conjugate vaccine as an effort of control for this disease of the most vulnerable. We are excited to build on this partnership uh, and also evaluate the role of environmental surveillance, which as you know, is now going to be important for monitoring diseases, not only like typhoid, but also others like COVID-19. We do believe that Ghana is at the forefront of the lessons and the um, efforts to control typhoid. And we understand that the lessons that are going to be learned here through the efforts of the CNUS team with IBI support is, are going to be um, applicable to the whole continent. And in that sense, we're excited about the work that is being done here and excited about this partnership. And so I thank you 
and I wish you all the best. Yeah, um, the support by the foundation has indeed been remarkable and we are glad they are continuing to do so on our way forward. Um, so now may I introduce Ms. Hejin Jung, country rep rep representative for the Korea Foundation for International Healthcare. Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, Mahama Asei Saini, the ambassador of Korea to Ghana, his Excellency Im Jung Tech, Presidential Advisor for Health, Dr. Anthony Nsia Sare, Director General of IVI, Dr. Kim, and other esteemed guests. Good morning and good evening for Korea. I'm He Jin Jung, uh, the country representative of Korea Foundation for International Healthcare. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be a part of this memorable ceremony. As a government agency under the Ministry of Health and Welfare of the Republic of Korea, Korea Foundation for International Healthcare has been partnering with the Republic of Ghana since 2013. We opened uh, our country office within Ghana Health Service headquarters in, in 2014 and implemented uh, various uh, cooperation projects, uh, for example, uh, in maternal, neonatal and child health improvement, and national health insurance uh, policy corporations, uh, laparoscopic surgery developments with the Rich Hospital and Confanochi Hospital, which is near there. And we also uh, rolled out invitational training programs uh, for healthcare professionals, etc. And Korea and Ghana have a lot in common and a lot to share with other surrounding countries, especially both have been nominated as, as uh, model countries uh, when it comes to uh, COVID-19 responses. So among all the technological advances, um, development of vaccines is the strongest weapon when fighting against pan pandemics. Therefore, it makes sense that the two countries collaborate on the vaccine research. So I believe collaboration between KNUST and IVI can be a stepping stone to further enhance our cooperation. So as Dr. Ansia Sare rightly mentioned, uh, through this collaboration, I wish Ghana to be the hub of vaccine development and deployment for the entire African region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, our partners from Korea. Thank you so much. I now have the pleasure to invite Mr. Alex Kessie, General Manager at Google Presbyterian Hospital, to give his remarks. The Deputy Minister of Health, Alaji Mahama Asia Saini. The Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Anthony Insiansari. Your Excellency, the Korea Ambassador to Ghana, Vice Chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal Investigator, the Registrar, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the finance officer, KDUST, deputy director, IVI, head of department of pharmacy practice, KDUST, Nana Omahine Asante Akim Agogo, traditional area represented by Nana Kruntihine, regional director of health services. Asante region, also represented. District Director of Health Services, Asante Akimenov. The media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. For us here at the Presbyterian Hospital at Gogo, today marks another significant milestone in our relationship with KNUST our relationship can be described 
with the illustration of a Siamese strength, in quote, as both institutions are inextricably linked to one another, at least in the areas of research and community service. The Presbyterian Hospital, Agogo, is a, a 350-bed capacity facility sited within Asantia Chim North Municipality with a population of over 90,000. Since its establishment 90 years ago in 1931, the Presbyterian Hospital Agogo, although in a rural setting, has enjoyed patronage from across the entire country, and sometimes even patients from neighboring countries. However, in the last quarter of the century, there has been significant investment from our foreign partners, scientists, and researchers, researchers from KNUSD, who have continuously invested human, material, equipment, financial, and other resources to give this institution a referral status. In addition to our own efforts from the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, the two entities, KNUST and Presbyterian Hospital Gogo, have over the years successfully collaborated on several projects. Significant among them are clinical trials conducted for vaccines in the management of malaria and now typhoid fever. The works by Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, KCCL, Malaria Research Center, MRC, the School of Public Health and School of Medicine and Dentistry are noteworthy. As we are aware, typhoid disease continues to be a major threat to the health of many populations living in low and middle income countries, and Ghana is no exception. The state-of-the-art facility, which is being commissioned today, will generate data and complement evidence for the management of typhoid fever and related diseases. In the future, it is evidence that scientists from KNUST and health personnel working in close collaboration will facilitate additional trials that may include COVID-19 vaccines. In this vein, as management of this hospital, we would like to assure you of our continuous collaboration, including shared resources that will allow us to be able to find lasting solutions to the many diseases that affect our populations for the betterment of our communities and our country, Ghana. I'll conclude by acknowledging the Vice Chancellor, my own colleague pharmacist, Professor Obinfo Rita Akusia Dixon, and management of KNUST, here represented, as well as the leadership of Typhoid Vaccine Trial, led by Florin Marx and Professor Ellis Osudabo for their vision and continuous inspiration. Let me also thank Nananum for the provision of land that has enabled the building of this facility. Yes, they were here at the short cutting ceremony. And today, Nana Clinton is also here. Once again, we are very, very grateful. Finally, let me acknowledge the support from sponsors, such as the European, European and Development Countries Clinical Trust, ED, TCP, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and International Vaccine Institute, IVI, South Korea, and Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, and the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. God bless you all, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Alex Kesey. We are the best because of collaborations with people, uh, 
units like uh, Agogo Presbyterian Hospital. We have several partners across Ghana and the world. So we'll continue to do that we have to do for this country. Let me now invite Professor Elise Owusu Dabo, the principal investigator for this project to come and give a remark. The Deputy Minister of Health, the Honorable Alhaji Mahama Asia Saini. Um, we, met, we met this morning and then he says to me that when he was in Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, it was University of Science and Technology. <laughs> there was no Kwame Nkrumah. <laughs> um, the Presidential Advice on Health, uh, my own boss, Dr. Anthony Insia Sari, the Deputy Director of Global Health, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Vice Chancellor Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, my boss and friend, Professor Rita Akusria Dixon. I recognize your presence and I'm grateful. The Deputy Director at the International Vaccine Institute, my colleague, Dr. Florian Marx, with whom we have worked together for almost 20 years. I am grateful for your presence this morning. Let me also recognize, of course, His Excellency Ambassador Lim Jing Tech, representing the people of the Republic of Korea, our development partners, um, our friends of the media, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I, it's exciting today to be here to see what is happening by way of collaborative research. The past is as important as the future. In the last 15, 16 years, we've been building evidence on data trying to elucidate the burden of typhoid fever and showcasing to the world the importance for which reason we have to pay attention to typhoid as a disease. And this has culminated in revealing, certainly at least on the continent of Africa, the burden of typhoid fever. I remember when we started, there were no data at all on typhoid fever. We have come to a point where through collaborative research, through resources that have been generated, we're at a point where we can come into this facility after it's been commissioned to continue to generate data, to be able to have a point where we can spring forth and conduct additional clinical trials that may not necessarily just include typhoid be exclude, uh, exclusive to typhoid fever alone, but will include potential infectious disease vaccines. And as has uh, already been mentioned, uh, we're, we're actually talking about potentially participating in a COVID-19 vaccine in the near future. Friends, for me, it is, the future is exciting because once you have a facility here like this, you can only continue to dream and I want to, at this point, want to thank all these partners who have made this a reality. I want to particularly thank the management of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, uh, all of uh, whom are represented here, uh, you know, with our vice chancellor in chair, and um, the registrar, the finance officer, the provost college of health sciences, and and all of us who are here today to grace this occasion. This facility is here for us to be able to use this as a springboard to build on our existing collaboration and explore the future to our benefit. This will help us to be able to generate additional data, introduce vaccine, and most importantly, 
enter and venture into the area of vaccine development. The Honorable Minister, I want to thank also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, represented by the Deputy Director of Global Health, Dr. Duncan Steele, my own good friend, whose support for vaccine development for typhoid fever continues to grow. For the Ghana Health Service, for the Ministry of Health, for all our development partners, the media, the Algo Presbyterian Hospital, Nananum, and I'll continue thank you so very much. All of you who have made this dream a reality we want to say thank you. We are truly grateful. Uh, we believe in constructive partnerships as an institution. We believe that when we together harness our energies, we are able to do more. And therefore, together, we look into the future with resolute determination to ensure that we continue to do more, not just for the Agu, uh, area, traditional area, but also for the entire country, Ghana. On that note, I'd like to thank you and say to you that let's look into the future with expectation because the future is bright with the commissioning of the center. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, my pro vice chancellor for your hard work and uh, for giving us big news every day. It is my prayer that you continue to give us such news so that KNUSA will continue to be in the limelight every time. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to invite Dr. Florian Mas, the Principal Research Associate, University of Cambridge, and the Deputy Director General, IVI. Too tall, I think. <laughs> Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, Presidential Advisor on Health, the Korean Ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Kim Jong Tak, the Vice Chancellor of KNUST, the Pro Vice Chancellor and PI of the Taiwega Study, Dr. Ellis, the um, Regional Director of Health Services. Um, the Registrar and Finance Officer of KNUST, the Oman Hene of Ashanta Akimagogo, and the General Manager of Agogo Hospital. Good morning and good evening, everybody, Excellencies, Ambassadors, distinguished participants. I welcome all of you to this beautiful day. It's actually a very beautiful day for the opening of the IVI KNUST Collaborating Center. Um, we have been eagerly awaiting, and I remember we have postponed this opening for over two years because of COVID, so it's actually really great to be standing here. Personally, I remember I've been here for the past 20 years. I did my, um, my PhD um, over at, the, um, at KNUST in 2003, working closely with folks and colleagues from Ghana to investigate malaria drug resistance. And by the time a Gogo hospital was still small. There were like a few studies here and there. And, um, and then some studies started in the vicinity. And the first direction for major work here was a big malaria vaccine trial that started while I was still doing my, my PhD here. And in uh, 2007 or 2008, I forgot the exact year, we received the first funding um, from Korea, from Koika, to conduct the first typhoid study here which was really interesting because there was no data, nobody knew is typhoid an issue and whether we would need additional information on typhoid fever. And what was really impressive, this collaborative work that we conducted found typhoid was an issue here. And the Agogo site was a major contributor to the upcoming big large scale multi-country typhoid fever um, surveillance studies we did in several countries across Africa. Um, during the years, the 
um, collaborative research has much expanded, which was really nice. And both the human and technological capacities have increased significantly here in Agogo. And I could witness this every time I came back. And it's now a really big center, big hospital, attracting people from even far away. And also at the um, university, we see a lot of change since I did my PhD. And um, there has been much training, PhD programs were established and great new hires have now helped to make a really fantastic team at uh, KNUST, which is really now ready to execute health research projects in high quality. Also the laboratory infrastructure, both at KNUST and, uh, and here um, have increased significantly and what we can do now, which is really great, we can do actually analyses here, and we don't need to ship any samples abroad. Now, and under the strong leadership of uh, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Elias Abusadabo, his team, other and UST colleagues, the Agogo Hospital and staff, and of course, in collaboration with uh, the folks at IVI, and at the Cambridge University, we have arrived now at the new era of uh, health research, the KNUST IVI Collaborating Center, which we are opening today. And what I actually wanted to say, the collaboration between the institution, KNUST, uh, KCCR, BNITM, the Agogo Hospital, the IVI, University of Cambridge, have shown that research that is like collaborative, on a variety of health projects can make a difference, which is more than just individual projects. What we can see here, I think it's amazing compared to what was 20 years ago. And one of the centerpiece of our collaborative strategy that we are jointly executing is that all the work we are doing is actually autonomously managed by the partners here in Ghana and also the same in other country. And this experience, um, what we see now, GoGo and at KNUST, it's a role model showing how the study site can progress over time to become a regional center of excellence. So with this newly established KNUST IVI collaborating center, we are certain that this will be a beacon of high quality epidemiological and vaccine research, and we will continue our successful uh, collaboration and we will further increase the on-site capabilities for upcoming typhoid trials, hopefully COVID-19 trials in the near future, and also other observational studies. We are also aiming to make this a center for teaching education so we can train the young and eager new scientists because as we all know, a building is a building. What makes the building work is good people and young aspiring researchers to do the good work. Having said that, I would like to thank our Ghanaian friends and colleagues for a decade long collaboration, the hard work to make all of this happen, the teams over at IVI and in Cambridge, and particularly our donors, starting from Koika, who funded the initial activities, the Bill and Gates Foundation, funding the large scale typhoid surveillance programs, EDCTP funding the typhoid trials, and then also other projects funded by DFG and Welcome Trust. Uh, for your continued decade-long support of past and ongoing research projects. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this center in action, with the first use will, being the typhoid conjugate vaccine that is starting imminently, and then also later some upcoming INTS work. Again, after having been here for the past 20 years, I'm really happy and grateful standing here at this place um, and to work with all of you going forward in the next uh, years and looking forward to opening this beautiful center and very much looking forward to another two decades of collaborative research. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Florent Mas. All too soon, we come into a close uh, but before I do so, let me quickly introduce a few dignitaries who join us. Lee. 
uh, we have in our midst the registrar of the Kwame Krumah University of Science and Technology, Mr. Andrew Kwesi Boateng. He's the registrar of the best invest in Ghana. <laughs> We also have the Provost of the Health Sciences, Professor Christian Ejari, is here. This project is under his watch. We also have in our midst Professor Daniel Lanson, Dean School of Medicine and Dentistry. When it comes to admission, he is not free at all. <laughs> and then we also have Professor Kwame, Professor Kwame Ohini Boabin. Head Department of Pharmacy and Pharmacy track, uh, Practice. And uh, he is also the study pharmacist for this project. So he has a big task. Thank you so much, Andrea. So we're going to close this. And then after that, we'll cut the ribbon and do the tour. Um, so on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Kuma Invest of Science and Technology, the uh, registrar, the deputy minister of health, the presidential advisor on health, and all dignitaries. Nana, we thank you so much for coming. We thank everyone for coming. My colleagues or my friends, the media, when you go blow the story, tell the story and let the whole world know that this is what KNUSD and international Vaccine Institute has done. Big thing. Thank you. Flor um, Andrea, please, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we are glad to have this collaboration set. Are we going to be able to see the ribbon cutting or are we closing now? We will close now. We'll try and see if you can. Yes, you will see the, the ribbon cutting. Yes. Perfect. But, You give us your closing remarks and then we, we do the uh, prayer, the closing prayer, and then we do the ribbon cutting. Andrea, can you see, can you hear me? Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. So you don't have any closing remarks, please do, if you do, if you do so. Oh no, I think the closing, closing prayer from your side is perfect. I am, I am just um, overwhelmed and excited for this to start um, and very glad. I think all is set um, and we're looking forward to a very successful collaboration in future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, friends and partners on, on Zoom. Uh, let me now, invite the chaplain, I will go Presbyterian Hospital to say the closing prayer, after which we will do the uh, ribbon cutting and then do a tour of the facility. Thank you for coming. Please let us pray. Unto you, God, we give glory and honor. We thank you for a successful celebration of this ceremony. Father, we glorify your name for this center. We thank you that it has been your desire that you see your people, your children, people that you have created in your, in your own image to have good health. So we are grateful to you. We thank you for the life of our partners. And we thank you that gracious Lord, you continue to give them dreams and visions to even expand what we have seen today. We also pray committing every individual into your hands, especially those who will be coming to work here. We pray for the spirit of determination, commitment, and dedication. We pray that we will work as we are not working for man, but for you, God, who is our rewarder. So in all things, let us with, work with good heart and a joyful heart so that we can have an account to give 
when you appear in your glory. We are praying also asking for grace and traveling mercies for all who came from far and near. And when we have Lord here of the safe arrival, we we'll continue to give you praises. As we are about to cut this ribbon, Father, it is our prayer that you descend in your spirit and protect and guide your people who will be working here. In the end, we may say that you have done all well. This and many things, Lord, we are asking for. Especially, we are asking for a very good and strong binding of our relationship with our partners. This we know you will do because you have been patterned to work with mankind from the very beginning of creation. So do for us according to your will and according to your grace. In Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And dearly beloved, unto God's gracious hand and protection, we commit all of you as you journey back to your various destinations. May the good Lord who has called us into his mission and vineyard continue to equip you for his work. May his name be glorified now and evermore. Amen. Thank you so much. I now invite the Vice Chancellor uh, and Dr. Flora Musk will be doing the sword cutting. And then all those on the high table, the Deputy Minister, Dr. Nsian Asari, and all of you here can join so that we do the ribbon cutting. This facility was built by Stevo Construction. They are beautifully dressed here. Give them high. Thank you so much, Stevo Construction. Hello. This is the entrance. Wow. This is the KNUST group. The KNUST group. of the KNUST group. You see, leading by um, Prof. Ellis Osu Dabo, the coordinators also, the project manager, and also the other field workers and staff of the team. Nice. Yes. So this is the waiting area. Participants and their parents will be waiting over here, but because of COVID, we're providing tents outside so that we decrease the load over here within the center. This is the first point of screening. So after the consenting process, this is where the participant will come. There was a data person over here who assigned the subgroup, either safety or immunogenicity to the participant over here. This is where the enrollment process starts for eligibility. So that is where we start from. Then when this person finishes, the participants will now move 
this is the consulting room. There will be doctors around to care for the participants. So, still part of the enrollment process. The doctor over here must make sure that the participant is safe, healthy to receive the vaccine. So, if the participant does not fall within that criteria, we do not vaccinate. We want healthy children for this trial. So, as part of the enrollment process and eligibility, this consulting room will also fall part of that one. So the scale will be here where the vitals, the medical examination, the medical history, vaccination history, any drug allergies, this is where it will be captured. So after completion of this one, the participant and the parent or the legal rep will move to So, hello. Prof. Hello, Kwasi. Exactly. So, if you are randomized into immunogenicity, we have to take blood for this to know whether you have any antibodies for a effort. So that will be done here first, over here. So this is where that sample will be taken. When you finish, you move to the vaccination room. This column will be for the randomizer to give either the control vaccine or the intervention vaccine. And also the vaccine will be reconstituted here. It's a blinded process. It will be given to the vaccinator who knows nothing about what has gone on here. Then the participants will move out from here. From this room, we need to observe the participant for 30 minutes. So, The 30 room, the 30 minutes observation starts here. So there'll be another doctor over here to monitor every 15 minutes the vitals of the participants. We observe them for 30 minutes before they move out. It also serves as a restore station arm of the trial. So we have our oxygen cylinders ready, filled, ready for the trial. Uh, other emergency medicines will be in the tray, in, on, on the tray and also in the cabinet. There's a water mover here for participants if they want to use. And there's also a television to also distract them. Some of them will be anxious after, so they have to become the television. Then they move out of the center. But before they go, since we are dealing with the whole government of... So before they move out, if there's a need for us to give any medication to any participant, this will be the counter for them to come and receive. The pharmacist will be inside to deliver the medications to the, the participant before they leave. Now for the trial team, we have to move downstairs. Okay, I think this is um, the end of the tour. Um, I believe that uh, there will be difficulties at some point um, with the signal in some parts of the building. So thank you everyone for joining today. We were very happy and glad um, to have you um, participating in this uh, ceremony and um, very excited to move ahead. You will hear from us. Uh, we will keep you posted. Um, hope you will stay with us and uh, see what the outcomes and findings of our study will be. And um, yeah, wish you all a good day, evening, night. And um, thanks again for joining. Goodbye. You're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. I'll close the meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Zanyab. Thank you.